What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. So time for us to discuss Tesla. So I'm gonna go over Tesla's earnings for the second quarter of fiscal year 2023. As always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. Link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below. There is a 16% annual discount available till the end of this month that gives you access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, everything's gonna be included with the link down below and also connect with me on Instagram. I do polls and different videos and of course posting on portfolios and all those different things. So I posted this earlier 15 hours ago, huge Tesla earnings coming up. As you guys know, Tesla is one of my biggest positions and I asked a poll simply whether they're going to hit or miss on their on their earnings. And I think a lot, a lot of you guys, 75% of people uh, mentioned hit. So again, my username is going to be KSWRP. Feel free to connect with me there and I'd love to uh, love to learn more about you as well. So uh, revenue came in at just a little bit under $25 billion versus $24.47 billion. That was expected. So beat on revenue. So hitting on revenue and earnings also came in at 91 cents per share adjusted versus 82 cents per share expected. So also a beat on EPS and non-GAAP net income Actually, gap net income was up 2.7 billion, an increase of 20% from last year. Operating income, however, was off 3% from a year ago quarter to $2.4 billion. So going over to Tesla, what happened after hours was obviously not a surprise. It dropped a little bit over 4%. And this right here is the red candle just coming in. Lots of sellers stepping in to bring us back down to 270, 275 around those levels. Uh, and of course, Tesla here because of those margin pressures struggling. But my goal in this video is to kind of help you a little bit understand what the long goal is, long term goal is for Tesla. Uh, and of course, why the margin pressure in the short term right now with the gross margins declining a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, we're coming down from 19.3% to 18.2% in total gross margins, which is definitely a pretty substantial drop, not only quarter over quarter, but even on a year over year basis, you'll notice it have come down from 25% and down to a little bit over 18%. So 682 basis point drop for the company, even though revenues were up 46%, automotive revenues were up 46%, total revenues were up 47% on a year over year basis. Operating expenses did increase 21%. And as a result, operating income was down 3% year over year to just under 2.4 billion. And operating margins were down from 14.6% to 9.6%. So we are now under the 10% mark on an operating basis. That's a 493 basis point decline on a year over year basis. And adjusted EBITDA also down 372 basis points. EBITDA margin here, 18.7% versus 22.4%. Uh, and of course, coming in at 23% increase, $4.6 billion. Net income was up 20% year over year, to just a little bit over $3.1 billion on a non-GAAP basis. And of course, EPS also up 20% on a year-over-year -year basis as well. So uh, overall, I would say not a bad quarter for the company. In fact, it was a record quarter on deliveries, record quarter on production, record quarter on revenues, uh, actually record quarter Q4 2022 revenues of about 21.3 billion. That was the, uh, that was actually, actually no, record quarter on revenues when you look at it as a whole. So total revenue just under $25 billion. That's a record quarter. But on an automotive basis, uh, $21.3 billion in Q4 2022 was the record, I believe. And second quarter, 23. So this quarter, they only did a little bit over $21.2 billion. So uh, just a slight, slight decrease from fourth quarter 2022 but overall if you look at entire revenues because a lot of the increase was also from the uh energy generation and storage which, which was up like 74 percent right this is going to be a competitor to end phase as well because i did a video on both end phase iq battery uh, i10 and the power wall which tesla provides uh tesla Desi comes out on top with a lot of the storage and the capacity and the technology but end phase uh, using the lithium ion phosphate chemistry and of course the reliability, the safety, the durability, the warranty, the pricing, a lot of the things where end phase kind of beats Tesla in that space. But nonetheless, 74% increase for energy storage, energy generation was uh, very, very strong, but record revenue for the company. So overall, I would say numbers were good, strong growth on a surface basis, but margins were where the pain came from, where the where the stock basically sold off quite a bit after hours 4% uh, because of margins compressing and declining a little bit. So uh, if you notice, the total revenue growth was because of growth in vehicle deliveries, growth in other parts of the business, which is energy generation and storage, as I mentioned, and reduced in the average selling price year over year and negative foreign exchange impact of about $600 billion, um, or actually 0.6 
uh, billion dollars, so 600 million. Uh, reduced ASP obviously was the big reason because of price cuts, and price cuts resulted in margin pressure, and price cuts also resulted in lower ASP for the company. So profitability-wise, our operating income decreased slightly year over year, 2.4 billion in second quarter, resulting in a 9.6% margin year over year. Operating income was primarily impacted by the following items. Again, the number one reason reduced ASP due to mix and price cuts, cost of production ramped to 4680 sales and other related charges, and increase in operating expenses driven by Cybertruck, AI, and other large projects. Negative foreign exchange impact, but the positives were growth in vehicle deliveries because of lower prices and lower cost per vehicle, gross profit growth in energy business as well as services and other, as I mentioned earlier as well. And quarter ending cash and cash equivalents were just sitting at over $23 billion, driven mainly by free cash flows of $1 billion, partly offsetting the financing activities, including debt repayments as well. So when it comes to their core technology and artificial intelligence software and hardware, I think this is really what the long game is for Tesla, right? So as I mentioned before, Tesla is very much like Apple in the early stages as they are trying to build an install base. They're trying to get Tesla's in the hands of as many people as possible. Eventually it'll be FSD, it'll be autonomous driving, it'll be those types of technologies, software as a service where Tesla makes most of its money and the margins also start to creep back above 20%. Right now, I consider Tesla to very much be a hardware company. Apple was very much a hardware company for the first 10 years. They were All they were doing were selling iPhones, right? They weren't a services business. And now you notice Apple's services revenue contributes almost 20%, 20 to 25% of their overall revenue mix. And that has gone up from like literally a low single digits as a contribution mix to now over 20%, where now Apple's margins are also expected to increase over time as more people, more install base, more people are using their services and app stores and whatnot. So margins increase as a result, profitability increases over the long term. So I think that's really where Tesla's heads at. Lowering prices, yes, we've talked about margins. Yes, we've talked about how that's always gonna be a little bit of a question mark. And we're seeing that quarter over quarter margins come down, gross basis, operating basis, net, net margins basis. But it's a long game. It's a long term game because 466,000 deliveries is nothing small, right? That's a lot of deliveries. They're still on track to doing 1.8 million vehicles this year, which is going to be a 50% growth compounded annually, which we'll talk about in the outlook section. But artificial intelligence, software, and hardware. So four main technology pillars are needed to solve vehicle autonomy at scale. And those are extremely large real world data set, which Tesla is the only company in the world that has the most miles driven that has the data for it, right? They can pretty much create their models on top of their own data that they've collected over the years. Second thing is neural net training. And this is where the dojo comes in. This is where the supercomputer comes in. This is where they're going to utilize uh, their their own in-house supercomputer in order to create and train that model. Vehicle hardware, which is where the actual vehicles come in. That's where Tesla is getting in the hands of as many people as possible with the lower prices and vehicle software. So all that is gonna be built and, and packaged together in a software. We are developing each of these pillars in-house. A lot of the things like, for example, vehicle hardware and software is what Tesla is already doing. When it comes to large real world data set, this takes time. This takes a lot of time to collect. It's not like Tesla can just wake up and have millions of millions of miles worth of driven data. It doesn't, right? It takes a lot of time to create. Uh, it takes a lot of time to collect. When it comes to neural net training, they could have outsourced this easily. I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that could have helped them in this endeavor, but they want to do this in-house. They want to build this supercomputer. They want to do Dojo. So they say this month we're taking steps towards faster and cheaper neural net training with the start of production of our Dojo training computer. So like I said, I mean, they could have outsourced this, but this, well, they want to do it in-house. They're, they're basically putting a lot of their uh, you know, money in this infrastructure so that long-term that's where the profitability comes in for uh, for Tesla. This right here, the first Cybertruck uh, in Giga Texas. So that's incredible. Again, I love the pictures that Tesla always posts. And this is going to be the growth in deliveries on a quarter over quarter basis. Again, record quarter uh, for the company in terms of deliveries. Profitability struggling a little bit. So net income adjusted EBITDA. You can see operating cash flow, free cash flow declining a little bit on a quarter over quarter basis. But there's also some cyclicality there. Uh, this is going to be the trailing 12 months. Again, uh, you'll notice volume in vehicle and deliveries over 1.6 million. They're on track to doing 1.8, if not more. And this is going to be operating cash flow, free cash flow, and profitability. Also looking very strong on a trailing 12-month basis. And this is going to be the entire sort of uh, income statement. Again, automotive sales over $20.4 billion for the company. 
Um, and then if you take a look at, uh, let's see. So, okay, total automotive revenues, that's including regulatory credits and uh, leasing and sales. But if you simply look at sales, this was a record quarter at 20.4 billion, much better than the fourth quarter of 2022. Um, and then of course we got gross profits at 4.5 EPS. We already went over at 78 cents versus, uh, 78 cents on a diluted basis. Uh, and then of course on a $3.4 billion net income, um, on a diluted basis as well. Balance sheet again, very, very strong. So we're looking at cash and cash equivalent sitting at over $23 billion with debt. If you come down here, total liabilities sitting at a little bit over 38 billion and of that debt and finance leases net of current positions going to be sitting at just over 27.5 no that's the current liabilities i'm having a hard time reading this right now <clears throat> other long-term liabilities here are going to be 6.9 almost 7 billion dollars um, and then debt and finance activities net of current position is going to be 872 million so that right there was a number for the company 872 million <clears throat> Um, with about 20, uh, 20 something billion dollars of, of, uh, of debt, <clears throat> other long-term liabilities. So now going over to, uh, going over to the outlook. So again, so we are planning to grow production as quickly as possible. There are also some talks that Tesla is going to be releasing, uh, uh, some announcements for a new gigafactory in Europe. There's a lot of rumors that France is going to be the next place where Tesla builds its next gigafactory. So that obviously is going to help them with a lot of production over the long term. But uh, for 2023, they said that they expect to remain ahead of the long term 50% CAGR with around 1.8 million vehicle deliveries for the year, which is exactly what we calculated last year when Tesla reported for the fourth quarter 22. Uh, and, and in order to grow 50%, they need to hit 1.8 million. Uh, profit value, we continue to execute on innovations to reduce the cost of manufacturing and operations. Over time, we expect our hardware related profits to be accompanied by an acceleration of AI software and fleet based profits exactly what I mentioned earlier. There's going to be a much better mix of profitability over the long term. So this is exactly why I don't think the market should be looking at gross profit declines, operating profit margin declines, and just look at it on a quarter over quarter basis. Because yes, there's going to be some cyclicality. There's going to be some potential headwinds as Tesla gets up and running, creates that install base, delivers more cars, lowers prices. But over the long term, what they can do with that install base is really what the key is. Like that's what's going to unlock a lot of potential for software, services, and higher margins for the company as well. So just finally, a few more notes here that I wanted to go over. Model Y is the best-selling vehicle any kind selling globally. Uh, this is an incredible achievement by the Tesla team. This came in spite of the high interest rates and market uncertainty. Still on target of getting 1.8 million vehicles this year. Q3 production will see a slight decrease in production. In order to build autonomy, we need more training data to build a neural network. And speaking the benefits for more training, there is no substitute for a massive amount of data. So again, it takes time to collect. It takes time to basically for people to get the Teslas, to drive those vehicles, and for Tesla to have that data to build their neural network and large language, mo large language models on. And Tesla has the more driving data than any other company on earth. Success in AI endeavors is a function of talent, unique data, and compu computing resources. And we have outstanding capabilities in all three arenas. Dojo training computer is designed to lower the cost of neural net training. It is built for video training. We see the need for neural net training tech we will use nvidia and dojo for now today over 300 million miles have been driven using fsd beta and between autopilot and dojo computer interference computer and other optimus robot tesla is clearing at the clearly at the cutting edge of ai development as well and finally, Musk also said that Tesla will be spending over a billion dollars in Dojo over the next year. And Dojo, the supercomputer Tesla is developing for AI machine learning and computer visions training purposes uh, as well. And I know I was the boy or I'm the boy who cried FSD, he says, uh, but I think we will be better than human by the end of this year. And he said that Tesla is focused on developing self-driving tech for the U.S. market first. And of course, maybe even branching out to other markets in the future. We believe we can give them a cyborg body that is incredible, capable, $6 million man in real life, but it won't cost $6 million. Uh, $16,000 man is he, what he said and joked as well. This is for Optimus that he's talking about. So um, thank you so much for joining everyone. Again, Tesla here, 4% decline. I am still, you know, even more optimistic than ever after having visited California earlier in June and just learning more about the company, talking to people, talking about, you know, different aspects of their business. Uh, that being said, again, valuation is going to be a bit of a concern there. Obviously, I'm not willing to buy Tesla in the 290s or 270s or even 250s. I would love to buy in the 120s, the 130s, the 140s, and even in the 150s. Those are going to be levels where I, I consider myself to get a really good deal on a Tesla at those prices. But that being said, support level that I'm really watching is going to be 275 down to as low as that 21 EMA, so roughly a 270. And resistance is going to stay put at $312 per share. 
for Tesla as well. So this right here, very strong support. Uh, if, it, if and when it actually comes down to this level, so inside this green rectangle is where I would be looking at selling puts for Tesla to take advantage of you know higher yields because when the price is going down, that's when you want to be looking at selling puts uh, and you can get some very nice return collaterals as well. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And what do you think about Tesla's earnings? Are you buying, selling, holding? What are your thoughts? What did you make of the entire earnings here? I loved it. I would give it at about seven out of 10. A lot of the things that we already expected did happen. Margins did, you know, were under pressure, did compress a little bit. But some of the other aspects of the business are still on track to doing really well. 1.8 million deliveries this year. And of course, profitability for the entire year is still going to be much higher than where we were last year. So we're still on track. Let me know in the comments section below what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, join our Discord, Patreon. Link's going to be down below. 16% annual discount available. You'll get access to all the alerts. Everything's going to be included. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.